This class is iPhone photography tips shooting the first year with Julia Kelleher. We're very excited to have Julia here to teach. She is a uh, portrait photographer based out of Bend, Oregon. She specializes in newborns and families and also is a world-renowned educator helping to teach people. Specifically, sales and marketing are her strategies. Today, she is also teaching us all about, again, shooting that first year. This is a class for beginners, for folks who, or also for people who don't always want to be shooting their children with a giant camera. They want to be able to capture those small moments and we are thrilled, thrilled to have her here. One of my favorite people, Julia Kelleher. Thank you. You make me sound so good. <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone, and welcome. This is a really fun class, and I've been looking forward to it. Again, a basics class, but most importantly, I really love using my iPhone, and I think most photographers out there, pro, amateur, hobbyists alike, we love using our iPhones or Androids or whatever to, because it's just so nice to have something quick and easy. So today we're going to uh, have a lot of fun. We have a couple of uh, youngsters coming in. We have a five-week-old and Ezra, who is uh, 11 months old. And for those of you who have seen my previous Creative Live classes, I have photographed Ezra as a newborn as a six- or seven-month-old, and now we're going to do him again at one year. So it's uh, super exciting for me. The thing about uh, the iPhone is, or at least t being a photographer, right, is that there's so many images in so little time, right? I have, how many of you have been on vacation and like debated as to whether or not to take your big DSLR or just your iPhone? All the time. And how many times has the iPhone won? For me, a lot. <laughs> Unless I'm going to like Europe or some amazingly scenic place, I'm probably not going to lug around my big DSLR with me. And it's so much more fun and actually quite gratifying when you pull out your iPhone, take an amazing picture, and you're like, oh, it's my little iPhone. It's not the camera. It's the person behind it. <laughs> you know? It like, makes you feel really good. So we're going to teach you some kind of fun, maybe not so known hidden tips about your iPhone. We're going to look at some really cool apps for editing your images on the fly. We're going to talk about sharing, of course. And we're going to also discuss printing from a mobile world. Because ultimately, that's what's so important is, yes, you can take all the digital images you want. But if they stay on your phone not backed up, you're going to end up in a really sad state a few years down the road. I've lost a couple of my iPhone pictures over the years, and it is, it is really um, really depressing. But when it comes down to it, who wants to lug around um, just a point and shoot? In, I mean, compared to DSLR, even the point and shoot is clunky and clumsy now. And really, the iPhone has soared in its popularity to replace point and shoots. Point and shoots are actually not that easy to find. I have a Canon um, G5, and I never use it. But I bought it because it does raw imagery, and it has all this manual stuff and a little tiny compact um, device. But the iPhone still to this day, and I now own the iPhone 6 Plus, the big one, and it still to me is more convenient because it can get in my back pocket, it can go in my purse easily, it doesn't drag me down, it's not heavy, and it's easy to pull out quick and simple. Are there some limitations with your iPhone? Of course, and we're going to talk about those today. But for the most part, the iPhone is an incredible tool and fun to use, and it's easy to carry. And I think that's why it's become such a, such a, a cult. I mean, if you've seen the hashtag iPhoneography, it's become a really popular hashtag. And there are people out there who shoot incredible imagery with just their iPhone. We're talking they go in and edit and do masking and composites with just their iPhone, which is incredible that the te technology and the editing platforms out there mobile-wise that can allow us to do things very similar to what professionals are doing in Photoshop, which I think is really neat. So if you got it, why not use it? And really, you're not a photographer unless you have a tool, right? So you need something. So that camera, whether it be uh, an iPhone 4 or an iPhone 6 Plus or an Android or whatever, that's going to be the tool of choice. And it truly is not about the camera. It's about the person behind the camera who has a vision, who understands the limitations of their device and the limitations of light and can use that to their advantage to create a great image, right? I mean, uh, the, the biggest thing I hate most of all is when uh, people say to me, Oh my gosh, you're such a good, you must have a really good camera. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> you're such a good writer, you must have an amazing pencil. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, that's like saying the same thing, and it's so unfair. But with today's digital technology and consumers being able to buy DSLRs, I mean, the entry point to, to working with digital 
Um, I remember when digital first came out, it was like twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars to start shooting digital, and now your iPhone, basically an eight hundred dollar device that satisfies so many things in your life when it comes to organization, time management, email, internet, connectivity with the rest of the world, and also is an amazing camera, can be so inexpensive. So the entry into the digital world and into basically handheld cameras is so easy now um, that everyone's a photographer. And so I think that mentality is, oh, you have a really good camera, it comes from that. So I don't think people mean any harm from it. But it really is like saying, oh my gosh, you're such a great writer. You must have a really good pencil. And so I laugh and use that analogy all the time, but it, but it does work. So if you've got it, use it. There's only one problem. <laughs> Kids move really quickly. And there are some limitations that come with using your iPhone. It is a great camera. It's, you know, now they're getting into really high megapixels. I forget the exact um, megapixel of the iPhone 6 now. But it's really amazing the quality that comes through, but it still has some limitations. Your DSLR is ultimately the most flexible tool in your, in your toolkit. And uh, you know, when you find yourself being limited by your iPhone, say you're a beginner or just starting out, when you start learning about photography and all the principles of the exposure triangle with ISO, shutter speed, and aperture, you'll quickly realize that your iPhone is going to start being, limiting you as an artist, and you're not going to be able to do things that you want to do. However, some people are challenged by that, and I'm going to introduce you to some amazing photographers who are on Instagram. I love Instagram, and it's so fun to follow these people who create these just glorious images of all kinds of subjects. So I'm going to introduce you to some, some really neat people who are taking everyday images with their iPhones, and um, a lot of them are strictly iPhone, and they're religious about it. They want people to know that they are using a tool that has limitations to be able to show off their work, which I think is really neat. So we're going to focus on kids today, clearly, a, a four-week-old or five-week-old riot, and then Ezra, who's 11 months. And kids move quickly. And shooting that with your iPhone can sometimes be a challenge. So I'm going to tell you kind of things to remember. And this applies to DSLR work, too that'll allow your camera to get the, to use its maximum ability. So if you set things up for the camera to be good, then it will have the easiest time with the conditions that you provide it, okay? And there's also some fun tricks on the iPhone that'll help you with fast moving subjects. Okay, so what you're gonna learn today, you're gonna learn um, iPhone operation for best results. And I know all of you know how to go up and go click, <laughs> but there's some neat things with your iPhone that you probably don't know about. We're gonna check those out those hidden features that you're probably not using. We're going to discuss seeing light. It's really important for the iPhone to have good light. We're going to talk about seeing composition in your images to get better design. We're going to discuss seeing color and how that affects the impact of your image. And then we're also going to talk about how to work with different ages and stages of, of children. I know I have a four-year-old, and I've been photographing with him with my iPhone since he was a newborn. And uh, all my images on my iPhone are pure snapshots. I mean, they are just about the moment, they are raw, they are not that great at times, but I didn't care. It wasn't about making a great image. It was about connecting with my child and recording, just simply documenting his life. And that's kind of what I want you to focus on today, because ultimately, who cares if you're a sucky photographer? I mean, really, this is not about that. It's about making sure, especially as parents, that we are diligent about snapshots, because ultimately, those are the ones when you go back to, you're going to remember the moment by just looking at that simple image, whether it's a glorious, amazing, competition-worthy print, or if it's just a silly little snapshot that's underexposed and grainy and dark or whatever. Who cares? The point is, is that image takes you back to what you love and the memory that you were trying to, to, um, to ingrain in your brain. So editing your images with mobile apps. I have a very, very favorite mobile app that I use. As a matter of fact, it is so advanced. You can clone and spot heal. You can curves, histograms. I mean, it is cool. And so for some of you who are beginners, it may be a little bit of an advanced app for you, but I think it's a really good way to grow uh, your photography and your editing skills. And by using it in your phone, it's not quite as intimidating as opening something like Photoshop or Lightroom. Okay, so we're gonna have some fun with that. It is a paid app, so I wanna warn you guys about that. It is a paid app. I think it's $3, $4, um, but really, come on, it's $4, and it's so worth it, especially when you see the features in it and you're serious about doing some fun stuff with your, with your editing, and that's kind of half the fun. Really, it is first about 50% of it is taking the image, and then the other half of it is having fun with it in manipulation and really improving upon what the iPhone can do. Then we're gonna discuss printing from the mobile world. 
I have a huge black and white wall in my hallway, and it is all iPhone pictures. Every single one of them. Just chintzy little iPhone pictures in frames or wrapped in canvases, and they are all black and white, and I switch them out every year or so, and my son is just growing up on my wall in black and white snapshots on our, in our hallway. I know as professional photographers, we get really critical, self-critical of our work, and we go, oh, you know, I, it's not good enough to put on the wall. You know, it's not, it's not in my book good. I should have used my DSLR. Oh, gosh, stop that right now. My kid does not care what I shot that image with. When he's 7, 8, 9, 10 years old, and he sees that I revered him on that black and white wall, that is going to mean more to him than what tool I used. Okay? So switching things to black and white unifies everything. So we're going to discuss presenting those images and putting them on the wall. And sometimes doing everything in black and white is the best way to go about it because it unifies everything. But to get a good black and white, you also need to get good light. Okay? And iPhone loves good light. So we'll discuss what makes good light as well. So why do you need it? Better images on the go. I mean, come on, who doesn't want that, right? Snapshots are our most precious memories. They really are. Uh, it's not just about the camera in your hand. And then um, a company that I love, Artifact Uprising, I believe it is, they have a, a slogan that says, out of your device and into your life. And I think that is such a huge, huge, huge problem in today's society. I am guilty of it myself. Those darn pictures just stay on the iPhone forever. I mean, they really do, and it's just so sad. Um, so backing up to the cloud, if you do use Apple iCloud, um, or any online service, or even just a hard drive, getting those things off and at least backed up. And there's so many easy ways to print from your device. You don't have to take them off first, which is part of the pain in the booty about it, is people think they have to take the images off their phone first to print them, which is so not true. You just have to go directly from your device, and there's some wonderful apps and companies who have made that so easy for us nowadays, and with really good quality, too. I think there's a difference between, you know, there's some labs out there that just are cheesy one-hour phototype labs, and they aren't producing with the true professional quality that I look up to. So I'm going to give you, introduce you to some labs who actually are producing quite professional quality imagery. Okay? Yeah. So Julia, we have Sandra Glover Clark in the chat room who says, I'm an Android user, but will try to translate. Okay. Um, so I just want to make sure that everybody knows that while yes, this is iPhone specific, many of the apps we're using across platform, mm -hmm. uh, and so many of them will be usable on your devices, whatever that device happens to be. Mm -hmm. But a lot of your content is going to be about light. It's going to be a te about technique, Definitely. and all of that stuff translates to anyone. Anyone, no and any what type of device you have in your hand. Let's talk light, OK? Light is light, right? There's good light and there's bad light. Really? I mean, it still holds true whether you have an iPhone in your hand or a DSLR, right? So good light, especially for children, means soft, directional light that has quality, OK? Now, when we shoot with DSLRs, we have so much power in our ability to, to crank up that ISO, right? Because nowadays, digital cameras, there's little noise. Well, the iPhone is a little different. I'm sure have you all shot in the dark with your iPhone? It's like kind of a hot mess. You know, it's just like, and you go, oh, it's a good moment. We'll keep it. <laughs> you know, it's one of those moments. But with the iPhone, quantity is important. Okay? You need a lot of light. The iPhone works really well outside in like cloudy, gray, flat light conditions. It works wonderfully there. Um, I want to kind of, today we're going to be shooting with this big softbox, and obviously we're in a studio, which is totally different than being outside. But this light right here, this Pro Photo Continuous Light, which is amazing, is going to simulate a window. And I'm going to try my best as a studio photographer, I'm going to want to move it around because that's my MO. I'm like, I, I want to be able to move it. However, I want to try, I'm going to challenge myself to not move my window because I'm technically going to look at this as if I was inside with my new baby wanting to photograph snapshots and beautiful things. I can't move my window, right? But this acts, for those of you who don't have a studio environment, 
and are shooting in your home, which, I, which is really what this course is targeted towards, I want you to envision this as a big fat window because that's exactly what it is. And we're going to be working with that big window and mama and babies here in the set and then we also have a crib that we're going to change out to. And I really wanted it to be as lifelike as possible so that you could translate this into your own home. Okay, so. It, this produces a lot of quality light, but as you can see, if I was shooting this in my home, this is close, but that, that provides that soft quality of light. So one of the first things you want to do when you're photographing your family in your home is get them nice and close to a window, okay, because that's going to produce that quantity and that soft quality of light. So like I said, it matters on your iPhone uh, to have good light. It has limitations. It's not about megapixels. Megapixels have nothing to do with the quality of the image coming off your page. It has to do with the size. Big megapixels means you can print it big. That's really about it. What matters is the quality of the sensor in the lens. That's why DSLRs, you know, you can have a 36 megapixel, but if the sensor stinks, it's, it's not valuable. It's not a good quality image that will come off of it. If you have an 8 megapixel camera with an incredible sensor on it, you're going to get amazing images. And 8 megabytes is a big file. Well, that's a big image. You don't need much more. So I think this whole concept of megapixels, more is better, is a sales consumer marketing thing for cameras to be sold. And so the consumer thinks that megapixels means better. It doesn't necessarily mean better. What you really want is a quality of sensor on your lens. And the iPhone is improving much more over the years, but it still needs a lot of light. It still needs good quality light to really produce um, nice, sharp, and lovely images. OK, flash. <laughs> And indoor versus outdoor, and I discussed that a little bit when we talked about this softbox, but natural light outdoors is going to be your best bet with an iPhone. Indoors is fine too. We just want to make sure we're close to a very big light source. The bigger the light source, the better. An open doorway, an open window, your back French doors, a sliding glass door, anything like that is going to be a nice indoor light source. Um, overhead can sometimes be interesting, but you got to be careful because usually it's not big enough. A skylight coming down, it's far away. So the light, light starts to get more focused and more focused as it gets on top of your subject. And on a baby or a child, it tends to be a dramatic look. You could produce some really neat images out of it. I'm not saying don't try it. But just note and feel as you get closer and farther away from a light source well, how much a difference that makes in the quality of a light on a face. Okay. Flash versus no flash. So many beginning photographers, especially uh, those who are just starting out with their iPhone, they put the flash on auto and let the camera decide when it needs flash. Don't do that. As a matter of fact, my flash on my iPhone is never on. Even in dark conditions in the middle of a nightclub, I will not put the flash on. You know what I'll do? I'll grab my husband's iPhone, put on the flashlight, and put the flashlight over here and take the image over there. <laughs> totally, because I don't want that light. Why do I do that? I don't want that flash just flat right on someone's face with red eye and all that nasty stuff that goes along with it. It just washes out and flattens the entire image. It, that truly is for snapshots, and you're not going to improve your photography if you use the flash in dark situations. Practice moving that source of light off the camera so when you use your phone, does anybody have their phone on them by chance? Anybody here? Russ has his phone on him. So what I'll do is, like if I'm going to take a picture of you guys, I'll put my camera here, and then I'll have someone, obviously this light wouldn't be strong enough to light all of you, but I would have someone hold this off to the side so we have a nice directional light source and then snap the image. Experiment around with it. You'd be surprised. And it's so fun, like in a restaurant, you take the candle you know, on the table and like, try to you know, get your little light going on. And it's, it's a lot of fun because you can have multiple light sources or put you know, one light behind somebody with a hair light you know, and like, the candle in the front. Us photographers get really creative and kind of, kind of obsessed with creating unique light with whatever we have on hand. So yeah. I remember uh, when I was in New York a few years back with the Creative Live crew, we went out there to do an event and we were all out at the Brooklyn Bridge and it was at night after the thing had wrapped and so there was like three people there and then like four other people with <laughs> iPhones like lighting it to take one picture. So but awesome. it worked out great it's and amazing. it really is cool. Like you use a lot of those same techniques. It's, it's so fun. So I always tell people try to stay away from Flash. Flash is like there for the, it's there for the, 
hobbyist. It's there for someone who knows nothing about taking pictures. It's there because iPhone needs to be able to help consumers take pictures in dark situations. So the flash is like the, the last result. So stay away from your flash if you can. Your images will become a lot better. OK, so this is my boy. <laughs> Um, he was, what was he, Valinda? Valinda Start is my student manager. She started off as my nanny. So she was holding my boy in her arms when he was four or five weeks old. Um, so she has seen him grown up. The image on the left is right by a window on Mother's Day. It says property of mom on his t-shirt. I just, but isn't that funny that I look at that and I immediately know it was Mother's Day right before we went out to brunch and with the red t-shirt on. And we put him by the window. And granted, there's some hot spots there on the bench and stuff. This is a snapshot. This is not like award-winning work. But the light is so much better on his face than in the other image on the right, where we threw him down in the garage in a big pot, OK? Because I just thought he'd be cute in a pot. But the light's terrible. And the, his t-shirt says chick magnet, by the way. Um, <laughs> and the colors are off. And it's just kind of, it's not as high quality of a light source on his face when the one on the left. So I encourage you to really look for it in the eyes. And this is him. Gosh, how I, it's, it's funny because you don't really remember how old they were. I know Belinda's like, looking at it, going, how old was he in that picture? He had to have been like six months old there, maybe seven. No, actually, he'd have the bottom teeth. He had to be 10 months there because he just started getting his bottom teeth. But look for the light in the eyes. You can see if you look in this slide here, um, the light source, the catch light, is coming from this angle. So it's not you know, perfect, ideal, professional light, because like, if that were the case, you'd want the light coming from the upper angle you know, and all these technical things that have to do with professional, professional photography. But what you can see in the eyes, when the light hits, you'll get the counter catch light in the other eye. And he's got these gorgeous blue eyes, so that counter catch light just fires immediately because of the round sphere of the eye. So when light goes into one side at the right angle, it will come out the other side of the sphere in what's called a counter catch light. And when that happens naturally, it is so incredibly beautiful. And you know you've nailed your light when that happens. So look for that. It's kind of a trick to, to making your images pop or your children's eyes pop in particular, uh, which is really fun. Let's talk color. The color wheel. Color theory, I know, is like art stuff, but it's so important. It will really help make your images better. And I'm going to talk about some minor, minor concepts that are, if you think about it, when you start shooting with your iPhone, it's going to make a world of difference in your images. I want you to look at the red triangle at the um, black dot inside the triangle for 20 seconds. Just stare at it. Don't stop looking. Keep staring at that red triangle black dot. And when I say so, not yet, when I say so, you're going to move over to the black dot with nothing around it, just in the white space. So keep staring at the red. Five, four, three, two, one. Move over to the other side. What do you see? Isn't that weird? It's such a cool exercise. You see another triangle in its complement color, like a green-blue, don't you? Isn't that strange? What is that doing? What does that say about your brain? Your brain looks for harmonious color. And complementary colors are har do have harmony. They are contrasting. And they bounce off each other. But your brain, synapses firing, looks for that color. It's the most incredible thing. So if you produce images that work with the color harmonies, that image is going to be more appealing overall. Now, whoever is looking at the image won't know why, why they like it. But with good color harmony, it, it's going to be a powerful impact on the image. Does that make sense? And when I tell you some accounts to look at on Instagram for inspiration and stuff like that, you're going to see how they use color. It's absolutely incredible. And some people, color is really intuitive. Like, they don't even know the color wheel, but yet, but that's because our brains naturally and psychologically want that color. So keep that in mind. It's a very interesting concept. So let's look at a few color harmonies, OK? There's complementary, analogous, triadic, monochromatic types of color schemes. And there's warm colors, cool colors, and neutral tones, right? So 
each color theory or color combination, I should say, has a different feeling. So a complementary color means colors that are opposite each other on the color wheel. They vibrate against each other. They're a lot of energy. They're very happy. You know, Christmas is red and green. They're opposite each other on the color wheel. That's why Christmas is so vibrant and colorful, okay, and has a feel-good component with it. Doing images of children in complementary colors is a lot of fun because it means it, it connotates this happiness, okay? Spunky. Split complementary is when you take one color, go across to its complement, and then split on either side to the secondary tone, or triadic tone, I should say. And that really creates a neat color scheme as well. It's a little more calming, but it's still energizing. Then we have analogous, colors that are on either side of a, primary, of a main color on the color wheel, okay? So I, it's a very monochromatic look sometimes. When I say monochromatic, I don't mean all black and white. I mean all within the same color family, okay? And that's very calming, very soothing. I do that a lot with my work because I want the face, the portrait of the face to stand out. And if I use a very analogous color scheme, it tends to make that face be the center focus of the image. Especially because faces are a color, right? They're in the orange family, orange, yellow, red family. So if I use an analogous color scheme in the blues and grays, that face is going to go bam, it's going to pop out because it's opposite on the wheel. So if the faces have, are in this color tone, and I'm using blues over here, that face is the first thing you're going to see, right? And that's what I want in my portraits. So when I'm shooting children, I will often use that kind of neutral, calming, blue, cool, gray, or warm brown type tone, OK? Then there's triadic. Those are the three across the wheel. That's a kind of a fun scheme to do. The primary colors, red, yellow, and blue are like that. And then also kind of the greens, the oranges, and the purples, which I actually prefer that triadic scheme more so than the traditional you know, red, blue, and uh, yellow scheme because it's so fun. It's just kind of a different spin on the triadic scheme. Composition, so important. And everybody always asks me this question every time I teach. And I always say it because it's such a, it's such a, as a matter of fact, Belinda and I were talking about it yesterday. Composition is powerful, powerful stuff. And there is a rule called the rule of thirds that it consists of what's called the power points. So basically you make a tic-tac-toe box on your image and where the points meet are called the power points. And if you put your subject on those power points, it's going to create much better composition in your image. It's going to tell a story. Each of those power points can have meaning. This is where everybody wants to know, because I say this all the time, but I haven't really written it down anywhere, because it is something that's made to be broken. It's not a hard, fast rule. It's kind of an interpretation. The power points we read in the Western world from left to right, correct? So. When we enter an image, we typically kind of sweep across it like that, un un subconsciously. It's not a conscious choice. But if you start looking at imagery more and more and analyzing composition, you'll find yourself doing this. So watch for it. Down here, sorry, go ahead. You're saying then that in, in the east, then it's the opposite. Exactly. exactly. So it, it, depending on where people are watching around the world, and flip I, it as necessary. <laughs> I totally. I should have noted that earlier because yeah. we were talking about that last night. In Asian countries where they read from bottom to top and right to left, it is the exact opposite. Okay? So over here in the lower right is kind of the place of rest. It's the place of finish. It's the place of peace and calming. You'll see me in my work. I put a lot of babies down in that lower right corner because I'm just ah, so happy and content. The upper right PowerPoint is still that finished moment, but it's exalted. It's up in the air. If you look at some of the great artworks in the world, Jesus will be up in that upper right-hand PowerPoint because it's kind of an angelic, very ethereal, very heavenly-like position. What, like the shot with the newborn baby where dad's hands are like this and you don't see dad, I'll put the baby in the upper right PowerPoint because it looks glorified. It looks heavenly. It looks very angelic. The lower left PowerPoint is a little kind of uncertain. When you put a subject over here and have nothing over here, it kind of feels like stunted. Like, what's next? Like, unfinished. What's the future? You ask, you ask questions. It feels a little awkward. When I did a, um, an image of an orphan, I put the orphan over here in the lower left. Uncertain future telling a story, and does, do people consciously know this? Of course not. 
It's a subliminal thing, but it impacts the image and how you create it. The upper left is actually quite precipitous. It's like hanging in the balance, like, oh my gosh, not only are we on the left side with an unfinished future, but we're hanging up there like dangling. Okay? So like, I, people laugh when I say this, but a bride on a cliff about to commit suicide, that's where you'd put her. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> which, which sounds like really morbid and deathly, but no, I'm, I, and I don't take, obviously I don't take suicide lightly, but you, you want to put that kind of a strong story up there, or like, oftentimes there's some amazing artists who will put, um, there's this one guy who does these composites of um, high scenes, like he'll be on top of a building, and he'll shoot down, and somehow he manages to get himself, like as if he's hanging off, I mean, you know it's not real, and he's hanging off, and he'll put himself over there to like, create that tension, and you're like, you know, that, that kind of feeling works really well in the upper left PowerPoint. So use the PowerPoints consciously to give depth and meaning to your images. Now that you kind of know how you can influence that, you're going to be looking at those PowerPoints a lot differently. You're going to be going, hmm, where should I put somebody? And how can I tell more of a story in doing so? Will the viewer of your image know you're doing that? Probably not. But it just adds layer upon layer upon layer of intrigue and depth to what you're doing and the story you're trying to say. The golden mean is another one. It kind of is in Mother Nature's magic composition, a spiral. Oftentimes you'll see images of staircases, like with a subject at the bottom kind of thing. That's a really neat uh, golden mean type image. And then backer saddle is uh, based on a mathematical formula. It's very close to the rule of thirds, but it depends kind of on the overall cropping ratio of the image. But oftentimes I will use backer saddle. What you do is you take a line across the center and then take from each corner a meat the main line at a right angle. So this should be at a, at a right angle. And um, it, so it, it'll change depending on the side of your image. If it goes this way or if it goes this way, those PowerPoints are going to be in different spots. OK? John, did you have something to? No, no. But yeah, it's kind of cool, isn't it? The way, it, the way it, it, sh it can shift. So it's loosely based on the rule of thirds, but not quite. But here's a good example of that. The floor helped create the design. Okay, so we've got the floor on the diagonals, yet the baby is kind of, and it's not perfectly located, the face there on the backer saddle point. But that should give you at least some kind of idea of why I put the, the boards and the floor at a diagonal like that and the baby in that upper left point. Now, baby's in the upper left, upper left point. Rules are made to be broken. He's not hanging off a cliff about to die. Do you know what I'm saying? So, rules are made to be broken. Don't take, that's why I don't really write these things down because it's not meant to be taken as a law. It's totally meant for interpretation and something to be broken. But I want you to think about this when you do your images. Looks like John has a question, yeah. Well, in, in the rule of thirds, we were dealing with a square in the composition. In back or saddle, it looks like you really have only, instead of four PowerPoints, you only have two. Yes. And so that upper left, like you had talked about creating that tension, does that really apply to this? or? You know, it can, I okay. think. I think it's more so on the four PowerPoints. But definitely, if we put the baby down on the lower right, it would feel more grounded, wouldn't it? It would feel more sol solid. Um, I guess really that what it comes down to, John, is the rules are made to be broken and you have to kind of interpret it how you want based on the subject matter, based on the colors you're using, and based on the size d ratio of the image that you're trying to, to create. Does that make sense? This is the beauty of being an artist. <laughs> Thank you. It's fun. It is fun to be an artist and it's fun to break the rules sometimes. Camera angle, point of view. Like I said, you're going to see a lot of pictures of my kid <laughs> in this presentation today, but it's so fun with kids to do unique angles, okay? Um, from behind, uh, their perspective is a really fun angle. Down low with them, you know, like down at their level is, is a classic way to go about photographing children. Um, and then from above, because from above, he's sitting on a scale there in my bathroom. Um, he's just so cute. Oh my God, I'm so emotionally attached to my kid. Um, <laughs> it, I know, and everyone else looks at these images like, yeah, whatever, just an iPhone picture. But to me, it's like, oh, he's just so cute. I can't believe that time is gone. Um, but you look, you know, looking down at them like that makes them seem so small and creates a whole other story to it. So look at your camera angles. For those of you who are beginners, I would just focus on these three right now. Focus on what they see from their perspective. It's okay to shoot the back of your kid's head. It really is. And it tells a story. Um, it's okay to shoot them down low at their angle and not show every part of their face. And it's okay to shoot them from above. I try not to shoot from above unless I'm really, really 
trying to say something about how small he is because I think too many images from above over time, if that's all that's in your portfolio, it tends to be, I don't know, it kind of says a message of domineer, like he's always, he's, it doesn't give that variety. Yeah, it's like looking down on a child. Um, one of my mentors uh, a long time ago, Cheryl Jacobs, who is an amazing black and white film photographer, she used to say how much she hated that her parents took images of, from above, from over the top of her. Because it sent such a, I'm not a valuable enough human being message. Like when she looked at the images, she felt small, she felt looked down upon. And so for her, getting down at the child's level was so important because it made the child feel like they were just as important as an adult because they are looked at at their point of view from how they see the world, not what the adult is forcing on them. Does that make sense? So just a little, a little tidbit. Um, obviously, I shoot my kid above you know, all the time because it's really cute. But I think just keep the variety. And, and you want the message to your son, the message you send to your children ultimately to be one of, I wanted you from every way of life and every way that you were. OK, some quick tips on your iPhone. To open the camera, this is really cool, and I'll show you this as we get into working with the camera. From a lock screen, like you know you haven't put in your passcode yet, from a lock screen, press the home button and just swipe upward and the camera will immediately open. Like this is awesome with kids. Because how often are you like, oh my gosh, this is so cute, I gotta take a picture. And you're trying to open it in passcode and you're you know, it just makes you crazy. Grab your phone, press the home button, and on the right side you'll see a little camera icon. Swipe up right there and the camera will instantly open like that. That is the fastest way to get to your camera. If you're in, if you've already opened up with the passcode, you can again swipe up and there's an icon there to press for your camera. It's actually a little slower, believe it or not, than being from a lock screen. So um, that's kind of quick ways to get into your camera. On the iPhone camera, the grid is amazing because it sets those power points for you right there on the rule of thirds. So I use the grid all the time because it helps me see where my power points are in the image. So go to settings, camera and photos, there's a little screenshot there and you just want to turn on the grid right there. So just make sure you click it so it's green and that will turn on your grid and give you a great compositional tool every time you open your camera. You can set focus and exposure, okay? When you have your phone open, you can touch the screen where you want it to focus and expose. Okay? Which is pretty cool. Okay? Which is pretty cool. So you don't have to just hold up your camera and hope that it focuses on the right thing. You can actually touch where the subject is and go focus. And it'll focus right there. And I'm going to show you all this in the camera. Here's a step even cooler. If you touch and hold, it will lock focus and exposure right there. And you can recompose your image however you want. Snap the picture and bam, you're done. Here's even cooler. Touch and lock the focus and exposure. And you'll see the little sun icon come up right there. You can swipe up or down on your camera and it will adjust exposure. It'll darken or lighten the image. Which is pretty cool because you can touch exposure, like you can touch a face, say you have a really dark, Back, or a really bright background and a dark subject. You want to focus and get the exposure on the person, right? Because you want that to be what's, what's good. Well, sometimes the phones, it'll act funny or it won't cut, expose it right, but it'll focus nice. Lock that focus and then you can swipe up and down and you can adjust your exposure, making it darker or lighter based on how you like the look of the image. Okay, so that we'll, we'll do that in the phone as well, okay? Uh, yeah, and I think I just, uh, yeah, so anyway, burst mode, great for kids. Oh my gosh, how many of you know this? If you just keep holding the shutter button, it'll burst. Take like, I think you can go up to like 100 pictures. Granted, that's a lot of gigs you're putting on your phone, you gotta erase them all, so keep that in mind. <laughs> but with a child, it's wonderful because you can just go, you can lock your focus and exposure and go and then it'll just cap capture them in motion, okay? Keep in mind, when they're moving, now granted, the iPhone runs at a very, uh, very closed down aperture, so a lot, it doesn't have a big depth of field. And especially if your subject is far away from you, everything's pretty much gonna be in focus. But if you're you know, shooting your kid like right here, and um, you lock focus and exposure, and you start bursting, and they move back and forth on the front of this thing, some of the images are gonna be out of focus. So just keep that in mind that, um, 
it, it's not a tracking focus. It won't track your kid as, as, it, as it moves, but it will burst, OK? OK, uh, but this is amazing for kids. And oftentimes, I mean, it's, it's spray and pray, right? So we call it <laughs> spray and pray. I got one. Did I get one? No, I hope I got one. Look through your images, and chances are you'll have one or two. And sometimes that's what it comes down to with a one-year-old moving around. We've got Ezra, who's 11 months. I may be using Burst a couple times to like get what I need. So keep it's it's okay to do that. There's no problem. Just make sure you go through and delete the ones you don't want, because trust me, trying to clean out an iPhone is a little bit of a pain in the booty. Four weeks old. This is my son when he was four weeks old. So cute. Belinda's like, oh, he's so cute. Um, Things to remember about this age. First of all, they don't do much. They sleep. But that's the beautiful part about it, because they're easy to capture, because they're not moving. <laughs> OK? I love to get the abstract shots, the little cloth diaper with his legs, you know, little close-ups of the face, his feet rather than his face, that kind of thing. Um, the first smile, and of course, he's, right, he's in my arms right there next to a window. Um, and that was literally when we came home from the hospital, and he gave that little sleepy smile that I love so much. But keeping it natural is sometimes best, and it's about the image design. If, you, if they are moving around a lot and kind of awkward looking, um, or moving their legs so much that you can't get a good shot with the iPhone, swaddle them up, tight, bundle them up. That's, that helps a lot. Um, look for the details in the abstract. Uh, don't always get the face. Get the little details that you want to remember, his little hand on a on a surface or something like that can, be, can create a lovely designed image. And always go for those unique angles as well. So this is Dean when he was four weeks old as well. This image, he was moving his arms and yawning. It's totally soft. It's barely even in focus, OK? But sometimes that doesn't matter when you're shooting with your iPhone. But the color harmony and everything makes it so that he pops out. And this is one of my favorite images, even though it's not that technically great. Um, and I think that's what's important to keep in mind. Four months old, of course, that smile is, is beginning to develop. And using negative space and other objects in the frame to tell a story, here, you know, I just, he's on a rug. I mean, he's on a rug in my living room. And I literally just stood over him and went like this and put his little favorite chew toy of the moment right next to him. And that's the image. I mean, that's really it. Simple, clean. I didn't even worry about color here. I just worried about composition and design and putting the memory in there that he loved, that little butterfly. And that little butterfly, or bee, or whatever it is, was given to him by his Aunt Jenny. And so those sentimental things add, added to an image can also create for a great moment and a great snapshot. By the time they start getting a little older, you can start telling a story, OK? That's Winston's toy. And Dean wants it, my son Dean. And Winston's watching him like, how fast are we each going to get there? You know, and that's my, uh, that's my backyard. And I saw them doing this. And I was like, oh my gosh, pull out the camera. Who cares? But do you see the triadic composition? How I use the, the three triangles to kind of create the storyline? And you can't see my kid's face. This image is about whether or not Winston or, or Dean is going to get there first. OK? Unfortunately, Dean passed away. Uh, Dean passed away. Winston passed away. Uh, probably six months after that photo was, was taken, which, so it's very special to me. Winston is my fur baby. He's the dog I got before I got married. He's the one who put me through all the breakups. <laughs> He's the one who slept on my belly when I was pregnant you know, with his head. So he was a, a good soul. He died too young of, of cancer, unfortunately. But um, I miss him every, every day. And this image, even though it was shot with my iPhone and it was a total snapshot, is one of my favorites. It's truly one of my favorites. And what you'll notice is Dean's lovey is underneath his feet. That lovey is still with him today. It is threadbare, ugly, <laughs> dirty. He won't let us wash it, you know, that kind of thing. So keep that in mind. And then, of course, 12 months old, this is when they're moving. Oh, my goodness. So sometimes getting them asleep is the best thing to do. <laughs> um, and also converting to black and white is, is really fun. But sitting up, crawling, standing, these are the, the phases that we're in at this time. Uh, pinching, grasping, that personality, and that storytelling. OK, quickly, before we start shooting, enhancing your images on your iPhone. I use the app Photo Genie. It is fairly advanced. 
okay? But we're gonna work in it a little bit today for editing your images, and it's really, really, really cool. And honestly, I don't know people, uh, many people who use it. There are lots of free apps there out there, and I'm gonna give you some to check out. Uh, Hipstamatic is a really neat one. Rona Designs is like a graphic design for your photos. You can add little sayings and fun little pictures on top of your images and drawings, and it's really charming. I love Rona Designs for kind of doing uh, social media stuff. Snapseed is a free one, which is a great editing app. PicTap Go is great. They're made by uh, Totally Rad Actions. Wood Camera is a neat kind of vintage camera app. Uh, camera Plus is a nice one. There's a free version of Camera Plus. And Mextures is applying textures on top of your iPhone images. You can do all kinds of neat textures. There's blending modes like Photoshop, masking options. It's really neat. Um, After Focus is a camera app that allows you to add bokeh to your images. So you can make your background go out of focus, which is really neat. Tilt Shift Generator is similar. It's Tilt Shift Focus. So you can do really neat focusing techniques to create that blurred background look, which I think is so cool. And then, of course, Pro Camera. Pro Camera, I have just discovered, and it is awesome. <laughs> Pro Camera actually takes over the functions of your camera in, in um, your phone. But it has such advanced, it locks focus and will track your subject. And it will track exposure. And you can turn it into manual mode and adjust your ISO, adjust your shutter speed. You can really play. I mean, it's, it's, if you want to take shooting with the iPhone to the next level, Pro Camera is like the DSLR for your iPhone. It's, it's, I mean, that's obviously an extreme. But the iPhone camera has some limitations. When those limitations are starting to bog you down, you want to go to Pro Camera because that's where you can really start playing with stuff. And I haven't used it enough to be fast with it. <laughs> So I probably won't be using it today, <clears throat> but I've been looking through it and it's really, really neat. You can even manually focus with it. So that's kind of neat. Okay, and then um, keep it all on the phone, but back it up to the cloud and gosh, all I can say is print. Here's what you don't know. This is what I tell my clients. Digital files are not archival. They are actually doing major research studies at universities because every single document in the world right now is created electronically and there is no way to archive it. No way to archive it. As a matter of fact, researchers and scientists think that this age, this thousand year term of humanity is gonna be the next dark ages because there is information will be lost like crazy because nothing is archived. Digital files are electronic and they will corrupt eventually. There's no way to not make them corrupt. The safest place for your images is to print them. A print professionally done will last 100 years or more, and we can always scan and make a new negative from a print. We cannot print from a corrupted file. And that's how I get my clients to actually print their work with me. Because if they, they're going to lose those files eventually. Everybody wants the digital files. It's kind of a thing. And when you're working with your iPhone, that's what you're doing is digital files. Back them up, knowing they won't last, and print the ones you love. So that's the ones, those are the ones that will last. Printing from your phone, here's some great companies. And they have apps. Go to the App Store, download it. MPix, Postal Pix, Artifact Uprising, Print Studio. And these are all high quality professional labs that will produce beautiful prints for you that it will be archival. Books, Mosaic Books and Books to Me. I love Books to Me, okay? Books to Me is made by ProDPI, which is a professional level lab. And what they do is they have my Instagram feed. So every quarter for $24, they send me a book of all my Instagram images, an album, and it's automatic. I don't have to think about it. Just comes in the mail, I'm like, oh, look at mine, so cute. And it's printed and ready. And I, now I have a volume of four books a year for every year of my child's life. Isn't that awesome? All my snapshots are automatically and electronically converted into print. I don't have to think about it. Here's some fun accounts to follow. I'm going to uh, leave this up for a few minutes so people can kind of screenshot this or write it down. So many of these people use iPhone only, and they take amazing pictures, whether it be just landscape. Most of them are people. Benjamin Hole is a farmer in Ireland, and he takes pictures of farm life using his iPhone. Incredible work. Amber Fillerup is based, she's a travel, uh, travel blogger, and she is pregnant right now and has her other little son, and she just travels the world and takes beautiful pictures of her son and herself in different locations. Um, Mama's Gone City, I don't know if you guys know Mama's Gone City, she has a dog, um, Theo and Bo. She has a book called Theo and Bo. And um, her rise to fame was because she took beautiful pictures of their adopted puppy, 
Theo sleeping with her son Bo. Nap time. So nap time with Theo and Bo. It's just incredible. You know, like, it's talk about tug at the heartstrings. Cooperberg, Anna Cooperberg, she takes amazing pictures of dogs with her phone. Noir Seven, this is the guy who's like hanging off the cliff, does all the composite work. He's really neat. Uh, this wild idea, take a picture lady, Dolly and Fife, and Jeremy's Lees. These are all neat accounts to follow for some inspiration. Okay? And then, um, so go ahead and screenshot that if you guys want to save it. And then if you want to find me, this is where to find me. So we are going to start doing some shooting because we don't have much time left. We're, we're running out of time here. But we're going to start shooting with Ezra and um, Riot really quickly. And then I do want to take some of those images into Photo Genie. So we're going to rock and roll here pretty quickly. Um, and Belinda is going to be here for safety. She's my studio manager and assistant. Um, I'm always very conscientious of being safe with babies. Um, so, and because we have this settee, especially with Ezra, he can sit on it. It's kind of got a round surface on it. I want to make sure that he's safe at all times. So she'll be standing by when I shoot just to make sure because I'm kind of paranoid that way. Okay? So if we can get this light fired on and we're going to bring, can I take some questions while we're kind of getting set up for that? Well, first of all, we have a question from Joan who wants to know whether you got a release from Dean because he is <laughs> going to be famous, obviously. <laughs> no, I did not, but he's my kid. <laughs> <laughs> Love no, it. too cute. That's funny. <laughs> um, Carolyn M is wondering whether you can shoot in RAW on the phone or with the normal setting. How do you set up the, the kind of image quality on the phone? Well, um, image quality, it's kind of what it is what it is, and it's always going to give you nice big files, but they are JPEGs. Uh, you know, the iPhone does not have the ability to, to shoot in RAW. Um, but because the files are so big, there's a lot of pixel data on them, which nowadays does make it nice, and that is the advantage of having high megapixels, mm -hmm. is that you're going to have more pixels to work with when you go into edit, which does, I guess, improve quality, and I should have said that before, so great question. Come on Hello, in. Hello, my dear. Hi. Thank you. And this, this is wonderful, wonderful mother here is, of course, Chelsea, who is our exec, our new executive VP of photo uh, here on Creative Live. So we're very excited for her. So cute. And this is Riot, correct? Yes. R Y A T T. Correct. Such a cutie. And he's how old? Four weeks today. Four weeks today. Oh my gosh, she doesn't look like she was had a baby, does she? <laughs> it's awesome. Okay, so he's sleeping right now. So I think we're just going to go ahead and. Um, Keep him in your arms. I'm going to go ahead and take his little socks off, and I want you to take off your little rubber band, too. Yep. So let me put sure. this little bank over here. Awesome. Thank you. He's so happy. Look at him. And what you'll notice, too, is babies at this age, for all you moms out there, um, they, they always get like kind of concerned because babies start around three weeks or so, they start getting little acne and, and little skin things. You know, their skin is so fresh and new that they uh, literally just come, like, are adjusting to the air. Um, so I'm going to have, so that, but that, all that can be edited out later if you want. Even in apps like Photogenie, that can be edited out. So let's go ahead and have you sit down here, Mama, and kind of, kind of have you just okay. sit like this and just, just lean over here, and we're going to have you kind of keep him in, in your arms and snuggle with him uh -huh. like here as if you're just hanging out on the couch, okay? Okay. Awesome. My, I totally want to move my light. How bad is that? I'm like, I want to move my light. It's not in the right spot. It's my window. I can't move it. Okay, so I'm going to have you hop up just a little bit so I can move my couch instead. Because I can always move the furniture in the room, right? The reason I'm moving it back like this is because I want more light in front of her. So if this was a window, I'd put her at that back corner of the window. So now you can go and have a seat. This is a big challenge for me to, uh, to not. Oh, look how cute he is. What a sweet little angel. Okay, Miss Chelsea, I'm going to have you go ahead and... Um, just put all your weight kind of on this seat's bone, and I want you to kind of, um, yeah, perfect, just like that, and lean and kind of like you're going to go, go to sleep on top of him. Perfect, yeah. Oh, so cute. Okay, and I'll move him around, so don't worry about that. You're doing awesome. So this is like classic. Can you imagine mom and dad coming home from the hospital? This is like classic scenario where this would totally work. Oh, gosh, he's so cute. And sometimes I always say um, you don't necessarily need to worry about seeing baby's face. I mean, in a portrait situation, like in the studio, I would be all about baby's face. Like, turn that face towards the light, make sure. But this is about being home and the environment that they're in. And you're good, Belinda. I think we're, since mom is here right now, we, we can kind of hang out. Um, we can kind of hang out uh, and just kind of like photograph mama, because this is what daddy would want to do, wouldn't he? He'd want to shoot mama like this against the pretty window, the light so beautiful. You look so pretty. He's like, oh, my little baby. OK, so in the camera, in the iPhone, you can see I've got um, Miss Chelsea here. And sometimes the iPhone, 
as far as color goes, it's gonna get it's 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 white balance is what it is. You cannot like do a custom white balance on a, on an iPhone. Um, so it's really important to to note. You're gonna look at it. You're be like, oh my gosh, the color is just not quite right. That's okay. Oh my gosh, he's so cute. So I'm gonna get down nice and low here. I've got some things that are kind of in my way. See how I'm kind of seeing my composition? I'm going back and forth and going, okay, where do I want her? Which PowerPoint do I want her? How can this look the best? And I'm gonna break a little bit of my rules, okay? Now that line on the floor back there, I really don't like. <laughs> but I'm gonna go ahead and shoot it because I'm in limited situations. Awesome, so I'm gonna turn your nose towards baby like you're gonna snuggle him. And go ahead and just give him kisses for me. Oh, perfect, beautiful. And you can just, don't pay attention to me. You can just low on him because he's so cute. And oftentimes when, when I tell my clients or people who I'm photographing not to look at me, it gives the best moment. So go ahead and just love on him because he's so cute. Oh my goodness. And then I can go from above, but you'll notice and just kind of snuggle on him, perfect. I want your nose uh, towards me, perfect. Chin up for me, hon, chin up. I know it feels weird, it looks great. Awesome. I'm just getting kind of getting some angles that I love. Now, also keep in mind that the iPhone is a wide angle lens. So it is gonna distort things a little bit. It's not like a pretty portrait lens. So sometimes stepping backward instead of being closer is gonna be the best shot you want. Okay, I'm gonna have you, um, here, I'll show you if you can. I want you to kind of scoot more like that so your legs are out more to one side. Perfect, awesome. Oh, he's like, oh, goodness. Oh, goodness. And I really wanted this to just be a natural environment. As I'm sure those of you who know me and know um, when I'm in studio, I am like anally retentive about details. But this is a home environment. Oh, you're so cute. Sorry, I love babies. I just get so attached to them. Um, this is a home environment where it's natural. It's about the moment. It's about the relationship. Oh, my God, he's so cute. And just kind of fall asleep on him, close your eyes, baby. There we go. Awesome. But you can see that the quality of light is what's going to really be impactful. Now, it's a little hot on his skin. So I can use my exposure and then lock my exposure by pressing down in that spot. See how that AE lock button? And then I can swipe up or down to reduce the exposure. Beautiful, Mama. I can go vertical. And see how it's keeping the lock on the exposure? Awesome, chin up just a touch, mama. Perfect, on the count of three, you're gonna look at me. One, two, three. Awesome. Focus one more time. Drop that exposure down. Bam, gets a whole different image. Okay, so I'll go ahead and show you guys what this looks like. But you see how just reducing the exposure a little bit? Now the light is not in her eyes as much as I would like. But that's kind of a matter of tilting her, tilting her head up and down to get that catch light in there. So let's go ahead and try that. He's, look at him so happy. Awesome, go ahead. Awesome, mama. And I want your nose towards my light just a little bit more. Perfect, chin down. Oh, he's so cute. What a sweetheart. Okay, all about the snapshot and just kind of getting the moment. All right, so let's go ahead and um, I'm gonna have you, mama, hop out and we're gonna photograph the little man by himself. Okay. Um, Belinda, I'm going to go ahead and have, do we have a little wrap for him, like a swaddle of any kind? Actually, maybe I'll go ahead and just kind of shoot some details. Okay. Oh, little man. Ah. Do you want me to run and get it? Yeah, I'm just going to have you kind of stand. I'm going to shoot from above. Okay. And just kind of put your head on him. He's so cute. He's going to be wiggly, but that's okay. He's not quite asleep. He's like, oh. But um, one, some of the fun things I love to do, especially like, because in newborn photography, we're all about the arms and legs staying in, right? Like being all tucked and swaddled. With your iPhone, sometimes the funnest thing to do is to just, you know, start composing images. He's going to be, you're going to be wiggly. And this is where burst mode might come into play. Actually, let's go ahead and turn him to the um, side. And I'm looking for light, and I'm just kind of letting him hang out. And I love his little feet kicking around like this. So oftentimes what I will do is just start shooting the feet. And sometimes I let the focus just do its own thing because, there, oh, did I get it? Burst mode, baby. Boo-hoo-hoo. -hoo. 
<laughs> maybe a few too many. But you can see how easily you can kind of come in and compose things later. And he's probably not doing tummy time at this point, so it might be a little bit much to put him on his belly. He might get upset with me. But let's, it's good for your practice. Yes, it's good for your practice, huh? Are you gonna be okay with that? There you go, yeah. He's like, I don't know. Here we go, good job. He's like, I don't know. He's so, but this little froggy leg thing, and granted my light is kind of in a direction I don't really want it, but creating that little froggy thing with the lines on the couch can be really cute too. I mean, how, what a cute little memory is that for mama? And it's totally flat light, because it's coming from that direction, but who cares, okay? But the color harmony and stuff is what makes it cute. Now, um, the iPhone app is not, he's like, what are you doing to me, lady? I don't want to block my light, so I'm going to kind of shoot upside down. Um, sometimes I just get really kind of creative, and sometimes they're not very good. And then other times, it works. He's such a good boy. Okay. Um, he says, yeah, let's go ahead and grab him off of there. And You're such a good boy. And the other thing you can do, like if they're wiggly like this, is go ahead and swaddle them. And I think she, she so let's go ahead and swaddle them, and then we'll bring Ezra in. Just go ahead and keep your hands on him. I'm just, I just always worry they're going to roll off. Okay, so to swaddle, like just a classic swaddle, make a square like that. Okay, yeah. let's go ahead and lift him up. Yeah, I know why. Perfect. Like little squeaks. I know they are squeaks. Okay, so then I take this edge first and wrap it over. I think I'm doing this right. I forget the basic swaddle. Okay, and then the bottom edge goes up over the shoulder. Hi. Oh yeah, you're gonna be so happy in like 30 seconds. And then this goes over to the side like that. And with snapshots like this, I don't worry about it looking that pretty. It's about making a, a memory. Hi, Peanut. Yeah, look at those eyes. But if you notice, I put him, he's wiggly, you're strong. Um, if you notice, I put him with his head towards the light. Why did I do that? He's looking at me, what a sweetheart. Because I want that kind of butterfly pattern on his face, okay? Sweet boy, you got a little Julie's coming down. Okay, I just want you to go ahead and keep your hand on him and um, move over here so I can take the shot, but um, Keep your head up until I'm ready, because yep. he's just awake and wiggly and rolly, and if he rolls too much, that would be bad. Ha! <laughs> yeah. Okay, when you're ready, one, two, three. Okay, yep. Go back. Yep. Hi. Now, the light is not perfect on his face. Do you see that? Hi, Peanut. So, if I was being anal about stuff, go ahead and keep your hand on him, I would do this with the sofa to angle the light so that's in his face, and I'm gonna have this TV in my background, but that's okay. And sometimes with babies like this, they can't really focus, so keep that in mind. So instead, I'm gonna kind of wait for him to look this direction. Oh, that was a good face. Yes, <gasps> so is that. Oh, you're cute. Yeah. <laughs> and these faces are what's so beautiful at this age. So really capture those those expressions and faces. And I mean, yeah, you can get some cute. Oh, it's such a cutie. I love that one. Oh, <laughs> that's the fun part. And as a mom, I mean, oh my gosh, that's what you love the most. Okay, so I have a little bit of an attachment to Ezra because I've been shooting Ezra since he was a newborn here at Creative Life. Um, and Ezra is like ridiculously cute, it's not even funny. Um, so with Ezra, it's going to be all about him standing up, about him sitting up. He's going to be a little fast mover, right? So the best thing to do is going to be to contain him somehow. So I'm going to sit him up on the couch to try to contain him, but he's also 11 months old and I'm not sure exactly what his developmental stage is, it yet, is yet, so he might be perfectly capable of getting off that stool and running away. So definitely something we're going to be, we're going to be uh, looking at. But before he comes, is there any questions about you know, the young age, the four-week age? Um, really quick, a compliment for Belinda. Joan says, Belinda, what a mom. You just wiped his little face and discarded it on your own clothes. Mom mode. 
<laughs> which I thought was funny. Um, a quick question uh, from a lot of people have been asking, do you have or use any iPhone lenses? Any of those ones that you can kind of clip on or attach to it in some way? The Oleo, if so, what's your favorite? Yeah, the Oleo lenses are, are pretty cool, but honestly, I've discovered over time that they're really annoying to carry around, <laughs> which I, I hate to say because they're such a neat tool, but... Um, for me, the iPhone is all about quick and dirty. Like, I want a picture, I'm going to take it. It's a total snapshot thing for me. Um, the, the, the lenses are great, but they have a hard time staying on, like, really well. And sometimes they, some of the lenses have, like, a sticky thing that you're supposed to put on the back, which I don't really want to put a sticky thing on my phone. And with the case and everything, like, they don't go on well with a case on your phone. And I'm sorry, but I am drop my phone constantly kind of girl. I'm lucky it hasn't broken. Um, and so to me, I want a case on my phone at all times. And so having a lens clipped onto it with the case is challenging. So there's pros and cons. The lenses are fun and great. And yeah, they definitely help in the situation when you, like when I mentioned earlier, that wide angle lens thing. Um, but sometimes a wide angle lens can be really fun, especially with Ezra's age, because it exaggerates certain things about them, which is what makes them so charming. <gasps> Mr. Ezra, hi. Pina, hi. what are you doing? You remember me? Oh my gosh, look at his little curl. Can you get over this? Oh my gosh. He's like, lady, leave me alone. <laughs> leave me alone. You're such out. a handsome man. So Miss, we're going to try to shoot Mr. Ezra. Um, Lacey was telling me that he has a little separation anxiety, which um, as a mom, it's OK, because you can, you're with your kid all the time. You photograph him, no problem. But with me, he might decide that, uh, yeah, is that a baby? Is that a baby? Oh, yeah. OK, Blend, I'm going to have you come on over, too, so that um, you want to hand that. Mike. It's for Lacey. It's for Lacey. Okay, awesome. So we'll grab, give that to Lacey. And then, um, Mr., if you're going to be okay with coming to me, come here, cutie. I think he'll yes. be okay. He's oh, been in a good mood. Hi. He's been in a good mood this morning. Yeah. Do you want to play? Yes. He's, what's your mommy doing? You want to play? Look, there's a baby. Do you see the baby? Is he saying any words yet? No. Is he standing Close up? Close to daddy. Close, Close. to daddy, yeah. Is he uh, standing up yet? Yeah, you can. Well, not on his own. Just okay. holding on. And holding he, on. To he'll things. walk around the furniture. Yeah, he'll walk around furniture. Will he get off furniture? Can he climb off? No. Uh, oh, quick. yeah. Well, if you put him on top, yeah. Yeah, he'll be able to climb. Yeah. Okay. He's, so he might be a little runner. He likes to dive and jump. So oh, be nice. careful. <laughs> Good. You're a total little boy, huh? Let's try it. getting you, sitting you down nice and close, and see what happens. <gasps> Hi, Peanut. What are you doing? <gasps> what are you doing? Huh? Doing? You just got that smile. I just love what's Miss Julia gonna do. Is she gonna take a picture? <laughs> huh? Get that exposure. Bring it down. Big boop. Big boop. Oh my goodness, you're just a ham. I love it. Hi. I just want you to watch him for the most part. I just took a picture with my volume button. It does work that way. Oh, yeah, that good boy. <gasps> Peanut. And sometimes the trouble with the iPhone is that like, it takes so long to compose a shot. What are you doing? <gasps> Ezra. <gasps> What's that? <gasps> <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to try a different angle and see what happens. Oh, is Miss Julia doing? Oh, that's overexposed. Yes, it is. Oh, let's go ahead. And it's kind of seeing overexposure is just practice. changing the exposure. What I'm doing is I'm holding down AE lock, so I'm just pressing my finger down on the screen. You see the AE lock button come up? Come on. Time lapse. I don't want time lapse. No thanks. Photo, please. You'll notice the photo lens is a lot wider. So I'm holding down AE lock and then dragging my finger up and down to reduce the exposure. You can see that sunshine slider there. I'm just dragging it down to reduce exposure. The baby. <gasps> oh, oh my god, he's so cute. I can't stand it. <gasps> yes, you are. What do you think? Should we try to stand up? Oh, let's see if we can stand up. Quinty. <gasps> ah, boom. Hang on. Can you hang on? <gasps> You're so good at that. Yes, you are. He's like, whoa, it's wobbly. Here, put your hands right here. Can you do it? Put your hands. You can, yeah, just make sure he doesn't fall. <gasps> Look at you! Oh, he's like, it's too wobbly, Miss Julia. It's too wobbly, huh? Oh. <laughs> oh my God, they just melt your heart, don't they? <laughs> okay, I know we can stand right here. Let's do that. Oh, look at you! 
Look at you, you big boy. And this is like milestone moment right here. I'm gonna have you hop out of the way yeah. for me. <gasps> Mr. Ezra. <laughs> we paid him to do that. Beep, 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 beep. Oh my gosh, you're just a ham. Yes, you are. You're just a ham. He always watches. <laughs> oh, we're going to crawl now, huh? Yes. Oh, burst mode. Burst mode. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so when they start doing this and crawling, obviously the light is, is not low and it's starting to get dark on him. Oh, but you're just so cute. Um, and this light is starting to get dark on him, so he's kind of out of the light right now, which to me, I go, oh, okay, it's not such a good shot anymore. He's like, let's explore fun buttons to push. <laughs> Kids love buttons. Um, but I think the, the basic message here is that it takes sometimes a lot of shots to get a decent one, especially with kids and an iPhone because you don't have the power of speed. With your DSLR, you can, you, I mean, I'm, I'm so in tune to my DSLR that, and it's so ergonomic, like the dials, the shutter speed and aperture, I can change things on the fly and it's designed for fast shooting. And the shutter speed is so great on a DSLR, which of course is an advantage to shooting a young child. But with an iPhone, that burst mode is going to be your best friend. And sometimes it's just about timing, setting things up. You see it takes time to set things up a little bit more and then making sure your light is good. The reason we're getting decent images here is because this light simulates daylight so well and it's nice and um, directional and soft on his face. If we were using flash, yeah, I would capture and freeze the action. Ah, it wouldn't look good at all. Okay. Let's get into uh, Mr. Ezra. You can see I'm going to have, I have a lot of pictures on here. <laughs> um, I did do burst mode in here a couple times, but one of these is just like fantastically, ridiculously cute. Mm -hmm. Yes, he's a doll. Oh, I love this one. A little uh, less exposure. Do you see how that one's not quite as bright as some of these over here on his face? It's a little bright. Um, Oh my gosh, he is so cute. But love how the wide angle lens, like the wide angle lens really oh. creates that and the light in his eyes and it creates that dramatic, almost distorted look that's charming with a child, okay? And it, this is one I would totally put black and white on my wall. <laughs> like, I love this image. And the fact that his overalls are kind of falling off. Oh my God, he's so, so cute. What a little stinker. I just love him. So a little hot. You can see how it's a little bright. The iPhone camera was overcompensating for the situation. So the way to do that is to hold down your, your, your finger on, on the screen, lock it, and then slide up and down to get that exposure where you visually see it. Oh my Okay, so which one should we play around with? Okay, I want to show you, we're going to play around with one of these because I want to show you what the app can do. This one here? Okay, let's do this one. Mr. Ezra. Okay, so you can favorite things on your phone roll. So I always just, one of the ones I want to edit, I, I click the little heart and that allows me to see which ones are my favorite. Now I can go straight, I think I can go straight to the app from here. It's a new app. No, I can't. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and close out here and open up my apps where I'm going to edit. You can see I have all these fun apps. If you want to screenshot my apps, you can. Um, Rana Designs, PicTap Go, Snapseed. I think Snapseed is free, Camera Plus, and then Pro Camera. This is the camera that has really cool, like, you can see my histogram up at the top there. I can lock focus and then move exposure. So focus and exposure are independent of one another, which is really cool. And then I can, of course, adjust via shutter speed. So I can adjust shutter speed to adjust control over the exposure, should I want, OK? I can adjust ISO. And you can see that up at the top there, that red area, I am hitting the table on the, on the whites in my histogram. So it's telling me that I'm going to be overexposed. But for this spot that I'm exposing, does that make sense? So I, I think, I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Yeah. Oh, excuse me, it's for the whole image. So when I put my exposure over here on the gray of the carpet, 
I know the image is slightly overexposed, but I want that area to be exposed correctly. Because if I do it over here, it's going to make the carpet gray. Do you see how it kind of darkens it? Because it wants to everything make middle gray. Actually, this does a pretty good job at exposure. But like I said, I literally just bought this app like a week ago, so I'm, I'm not fully versed in it. But it has all kinds of cool stuff. And the other thing, too, is you can um, do white balance, aspect ratios, grids, focus and exposure lock, rapid fire. There's an anti-shake thing here. So it's got a lot more features, especially for you pros out there who love to shoot with your iPhone but are frustrated by the limitations of it. Um, it's pretty cool. OK, let's get back into Photogenie here. Photogenie, for those of you who don't know it, I freaking love Photogenie. OK, so let's go ahead and, again, add an image. Here's Mr. Ezra. We're going to do that one. OK, so the main point where you kind of do things from in Photogenie is right here on the tool preset. You can crop, you can rotate. Adjust is like global adjustments to your image. So there's clarity, there's brightness, there's color, so saturation and vibrance. So I can up my vibrance or up my saturation, OK, kind of make it washed out or not. There's white balance. I can warm it up or cool it down. I can also tint it. Isn't that cool? So it's almost like your camera raw white balance adjustments, which is really neat. Um, there are shadows highlights, so I can darken my highlights, so kind of those hot spots I can reduce, or I can lighten my shadows a little bit, which I tend to do a lot because I love the shadows to have the detail in them. Then there's sharpening. I can sharpen radius and sharpen amount, so I can start sharpening things to make them crisp. I can denoise. I can use my histogram for a levels adjustment. There's RGB color tones, and there's also curves, overall curves, and red, green, and blue channel curves, which is pretty dang cool. So I can uh, like hit red, and now I'm doing a curves adjustment in my red channel. Isn't that neat? I mean, like this is Photoshop in <laughs> on a phone. Yeah. And for those of you who are beginning, you know, you're not going to want to, you're not going to be dealing with this kind of stuff. You're going to be dealing with an overall curves adjustment. You're going to be deepening your shadows, that kind of thing, uh, adjusting your highlights, doing a contrast curve, and that's about it. Okay. Here's where we get started to get really cool. OK, so now we have presets and retouches. Presets are just you know, your basic kind of overall, let's apply a cool effect to the image. Okay, Most apps do that, which is fun, right? There's black and white, vintage, frames, fun. And this is where you get kind of kooky with, with how you want to you do your images. But what's really cool is that retouches, you can apply a effect in one area of your image just by brushing on it, OK? So that's a post posterization effect. I can put that over the whole image or none, OK, and undo it. I can paint over the image. I can change the effect. So if I want to do a comic book, I can apply the comic book effect on just an area of my image. Clearly, I'm not going to do that. But um, then I can affect the brush, the radius, the feathering. Yeah, it's cool, isn't it, John? It's like, this is a cool app. It's the best part of the whole class. <laughs> For all you pro photographers out there, this is like the best part of the whole class. Um, so and then under, let's see, where am I? Let's go ahead and cancel. I can dodge and burn. I can heal. I can clone. I can blur. These are all effects that you can normally do in Photoshop. Now, are they as powerful as Photoshop? No. But for example, if I want to get rid of this little television screen over here, clone. Touch the point of the photo to set the origin. Right there, please. Touch the photo to start painting in. Oh, let me make my brush a little bit smaller here. Options, brush size, radius down, please. Feather, more. OK. Touch the photo to start painting the mask. Look at that. Touch it. Mm. Move that there. And then clearly, it's not a, an exact science. But you get my point. If you work at it hard enough, you can actually Ah, OK, cancel, undo. Done. Let's try that again. Clone. Touch the point. We'll let you do it again. There we go. And there we go. OK, you can see it's not perfect. But, and I'm not, I haven't done it in a long time. So <laughs> I'm feeling a little in, unconfident at the moment. But you can do these kinds of things. What might have been better is for me to use the, um, the healing tool. Double tap the photo to add a new retouch area. OK, so there, I just, you can expand, extend the area if you want. Oh, come on, delete retouch, there we go. 
There we go. Seal again. Sorry, guys. Anyway, okay, you get my point. You can, um, so you see how it just healed all that off right there? So it allows you to do really cool things, and as well as custom brushes. So you can add hue, saturation, RGB, and sharpening to certain areas by using a brush. So it's almost like being um, inside Lightroom. Lightroom a little bit, <laughs> which is really neat. And granted, are you gonna, the question you want to ask is, do you want to spend this much time working on an image in your phone? If you're on vacation, you don't have your computer with you, you might want to. You know, you're bored at night and waiting for an airplane, why not, you know? Uh, but I guess what I love so much about this is that it gives you the tools that you use most often in those high-end professional uh, software and allows you to do it on your phone, okay? Then it comes to sharing, and of course you can share from here, and it's, it's a great little, here I am sitting on the floor, is that okay? I should probably be standing up. I'm like, it's, uh, at least sit on the couch stools. Okay, at least, uh, <laughs> here you're going. I'm, so casual, sometimes I, I'm a little too casual. But anyway, I think you can see that this app has an enormous amount of um, benefits to it and fun things to do. You can also add text, of course, and do enhancements uh, with vignettes and frames and stuff like that. So really, what I love about this app is that it's everything you want in one app. I always hated saving, adding something to my camera roll, and then having to open a new app, yada, 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 it was a pain. So. What I love about Photogenie is the ability to do everything from, from, from one app and a lot of things pretty well and, and decently. So Mr. Ezra is a rock star. He's so cute. I think the biggest thing overall to remember is, um, honestly, as, as much as this, cl this class is about iPhoneography tips and using your iPhone well, here's the one thing I really want you to take home from this class. Print your images. It's fun to play digitally, but nothing lasts longer than a print. And all this work is for naught if you don't put it somewhere where the world can see it. Um, so I encourage you, whether you're a beginner or worse, a professional who's, shoemaker, who's a shoemaker and whose kids have no shoes, you know, the photographer who has no images on their walls, we are all guilty of it. I haven't had a family session with my kid since he was 18 months old. And he's four years old now. I'm so guilty of it. I'm excited to say that I have just traded with the photographer who had just had a grandbaby here in Seattle. We're shooting her baby tomorrow, and I get a family session out of it. <laughs> so uh, do it. Just, just don't, make, don't be the shoemaker whose kids have no shoes.